Hey, this is Michael, and this is my quick review of the Oster Bread Maker. I've made about six loaves of bread in this machine so far, and I'm just so pleased. It's just super easy to make this, especially coming from a sourdough bread background, which takes basically all day to make a few loaves of bread. This takes just a few minutes of preparation, and then the rest is just automatically done by the bread maker. So actually, today I'm making the French countryside bread. It's a two-pound loaf. And I have just followed these directions. And basically, in a nutshell, you put the liquids in this first, and then you put your dry ingredients on top. I usually, uh, in this recipe, I've actually added one cup of uh, whole wheat flour and three cups of bread flour. Recipe calls for four cups of bread flour, no whole wheat flour. So I just added one cup uh, to replace one cup of the bread flour with a cup of whole wheat flour. And then there's a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and, uh, and then the yeast sits on top. It's important that the yeast doesn't get wet until you're actually ready to make the bread. So that is uh, particularly important if you're using the timer function to delay the making of the bread, which you can uh, delay that for 10 hours, uh, possibly even more. Uh, in any case, I'm making the bread right, right away, so it's not quite as critical. But basically, there we go. We've got the wet ingredients in the bottom, the dry ingredients on the top, and this is a, about a, a little uh, twist here to lock it into place. And then the handle just goes down in the back. Now, for this recipe, I need uh, the menu has to be number five. So uh, actually what I'm doing is I'm going to unplug the machine. So when you plug it in for the very first time, this is what the display is going to indicate. The menu button is used to select the menu that the recipe you are making requires. So in this case, uh, it's French. Uh, the French bread that I'm making is a number five menu choice. So I'm going to just click this until it says five. And then I want a dark crust, so I'm going to select color dark. And then it's a two pound loaf, so the loaf button is how you switch between one and a half and two pounds. And then if you wanted to put it on a timer, you would use these time buttons to uh, delay the cooking for the time that you decide. When you're all ready to go, when you've confirmed all your settings, you just drop the lid down and push the start button. And basically what this is telling me is it is hot. So it's not gonna let me start the cooking process just yet because I had just finished making a loaf of bread, which is over here. <laughs> and uh, so I just have to wait till this cools down before I can start the next loaf. But when I'm ready, when this finally does cool down, just push that start button and it'll start uh, mixing the flour together and it just goes through its program and three hours and 50 minutes later, you've got a fresh loaf of bread. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. The machine has now cooled down enough. So again, I've got my water, I've got my uh, oil, I've got all my wet ingredients below all the dry ingredients, and I am ready to push this start button. And there we go. So it's just gonna mix the dough, just gonna slowly pulse like this for a few minutes. And then it, uh, it'll eventually form a dough ball, and then it gets kneaded. And once it's been kneaded for a long enough period of time, it just sits and does a rise. And then it'll do, uh, again, uh, it'll punch it down, it'll do this again, and get it into a ball and really knead it again. And it just does that process until it is starts to bake. And then three hours and 50 minutes later, you've got a nice fresh loaf of bread. When the baking cycle is completed, you have to take the pan out of the machine and turn it upside down and release the loaf from the pan. Obviously, the pan will be very hot. And then you will also discover that the paddle that mixes everything will be baked inside the loaf, and you do have to remove that eventually using the little metal hook that is included with the bread maker. So that's it. I really like this bread maker. It's very easy to use. 
Um, and uh, you can do other things with this as well. You can even make yogurt in this, and there's a few recipes for doing other things than bread. So I give it my thumbs up. I really do like it. Uh, this little compartment up here, if you want to make a bread that uh, the recipe calls for uh, raisins or some sort of nuts or whatever, you would put those in here. And then at a certain point in the cycle, this little bottom will uh, drop down and allow those ingredients to be integrated into the dough. Now, the only thing I've had a slight problem with is when this does drop down, uh, it drops down here and then sticks down here. You know, it's you just imagine, well, let me pull it out and show you this uh, one hand. It might be a little difficult, but uh, when this drops down like this, it hangs down, and what I have found is that if your uh, if your yeast is is really super effective, and the uh, dough is rising a lot, you actually may find that this gets stuck in the dough, and that actually happened with the very first loaf of bread that I made. Uh, it, it caused the dough actually to deflate because it sort of punctured the dough. And uh, it, it was still an edible loaf, but it's just the first couple inches of it look kind of weird. And I did take a picture of that that I'll show you here. But that is about the only thing that I've had an issue with. And uh, consequently, I uh, put too much yeast in that first recipe. I used an entire package of active dry yeast and I didn't even measure it, but when I actually measured it, I found out that there's quite a bit of yeast left over uh, because this particular recipe only calls for uh, one and three quarter teaspoons of dry yeast. Some of the recipes call for less yeast. It just depends on the recipe. But if your bread is rising too high, it's probably because you put in too much yeast. In any case, that was just a minor little issue. It hasn't happened since, since I've modified my recipe. Uh, actually, I've just decided to follow the recipe instead of winging it like I did the very first time. It's a great little machine. I like it a lot. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'll answer it if I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching and happy bread making.